few minutes ago, you mentioned something that I do want to talk about. You mentioned about your journey and you mentioned about encountering a sickness and an illness that paralyzed half your body, which I didn't know that. And um, I think it's looking at you now and hearing what you talked about your journey and how far you came. But we, we talked about this in, in our pre-call, and I think it's really important to highlight for the next few minutes. You called it transparency in materials. And so let's talk about what happened and then why this is such a passion for you. Absolutely. So um, I personally believe that, and my doctors believe, that uh, one of the contributing factors to my illness was actually exposure to a toxic building. Um, there was an apartment that I was living in at the time that uh, had what we believe now to be black mold. Uh, and so we believe it was a, a mid-century high rise, right, which are beautiful to live in. And it was such a lovely time, but they're, they're also known for not being double paned. And so the condensation and the propensity for mold growth is quite high, um, particularly in those buildings. They're, they're quite prone. And so um, that space had a lot of black mold. And I knew that from the paints that actually bubbled on the wall. Um, and it was quite tragic and, and very scary, but um, really understanding the power of buildings on our health and what the built environment can do to our health, both in a positive and negative uh, direction, um, is something I'm really passionate about because, again, it, it was something that was uh, had a great effect on me, unfortunately, negatively. Um, but that sort of dove me down a rabbit hole of, of understanding, okay, so, so mold isn't good, right? So we want to make sure to not be in a moldy environment. That's not good for anybody's health. But it could also go far beyond that. And I guess my question, you know, as I dug down the rabbit hole a little bit more and I've had a few years, you know, away from that incident, um, in, is understanding what kind of toxins or um, things that would negatively impact our health could be found in the building materials that we're using in the built environment. And what does that mean? And I think a lot of folks would say, well, it's not that big of a deal. Or, you know, hey, there's a threshold, right? There's a parts per million threshold that there has to be for these toxins. And I'll, I'll name a few, just such as phthalates, such as um, BPA, such as flame retardants and PCOAs. And I mean, long lists of multi-syllable chemicals, right, that are in these products. And again, a lot of people might think that that doesn't matter so much or that the exposure isn't uh, chronic, like where you're living is a chronic exposure, but just visiting a public building for 15 minutes may not matter, but studies are proving that that's not the case, that, that even small exposures really do matter. Um, you're able to pick up toxins either by breathing in through the air, you can do that transdermally as well, so even just like what you're sitting on and what your skin comes into contact with, um, there's a lot of different ways that, that you as a human body can come into contact and interface with these chemicals, and um, it's really... Um, it's really just not good. It's not good for our health. It's not good for our bodies. And each body has what's called a body burden and a, a threshold uh, that you, your body has um, when you're exposed to chemicals and to toxins, whether that be in your food, air, or water, right? And so um, some people have a really high threshold and others have a very low threshold. I do not have a very high threshold. And so for me, it's very important, um, especially when we talk about designing for all, um, to be thinking of this topic that, that I don't know is necessarily talked about enough. I know that we we are definitely going down the road of health product declarations and C2C, and we're you know looking at level and all of these sort of um, more transparent certifications, which I think is a wonderful start. But there's this community of, of folks that don't have a very high threshold when it comes to being able to take in toxins um, that we could design for in a better way. And that I think starts with transparency. Designers have, a huge power in their specification. Um, the power that they hold to change industry and to demand manufacturers to be more transparent and to stay away from toxic materials, um, stay away from chemicals is huge. I mean, the power is, is in our hands, truly. And so it's something that I'm, I'm very passionate about. You know, the CNN just posted in October that, you know, phthalates, they just came out with this big article that phthalates are everywhere and that they have now finally been tied to um, an early death. It's, it can be quite scary and it's not to scare anybody. I just, right. you know, I think just understanding the, um, the weight of what we're being faced with, um, I believe is, is big. And I do believe that we have the power to um, fight back. I do believe that we have the power uh, of specification that designers really do have an opportunity to make change.